Connor Ben knocks out Chris Van Herden in the, in the second round. What say you? Did you guys see the fight? What did you guys think about Connor Ben's knockout victory? Um, from the start of the fight, as sure as it was, it was quite interesting. Obviously, Connor Ben able to knock him out in the seventh round. To be honest, in the very first round, I didn't expect anything from Chris Van Herden at all. You know those ones when you see these guys, especially these guys, these are some of these obscure fights that you're not don't really have much confidence that they can really do anything. And you know, you see them at the start of the fight where they're a bit of like any slight jab you throw at them, they're a bit like kind of startled. You know, as soon as I saw Van Herden's legs go a certain kind of way and the way he was responding to certain shots, I was like. You know, the veracity that Conor Ben was bringing to him, I said, this guy's going to get knocked out. He's going to get knocked out, whether it's the first round where he looked like he was in trouble, whether it's the second round. I was In my mind, I was thinking, rah, this fight's not going more than three rounds. And truly, truly, he only went two rounds, literally. Like, in the second round, that's literally got caught. I can't, I can't remember the shot, but I think I got caught with a right hand. And from there on, he was just completely buzzed. <laughs> no longer fit to continue. Kenny Bailey's settings wave off the fight and it was over like but it's not even much to really talk about like this fight was just another knockover job another person you know to obviously not let me not say knock up but kind of just to get the highlight reels pad up the the CV a little bit for Conor Ben obviously he's beat Chris Algieri um in his in his last fight and he beat um Adrian Granados as well and obviously um, this is just another fight, just pretty much just a ticking over fight, just to, like I said, to get that resume padded up a little bit, you know, get the confidence going and also, you know, get the public excited because obviously the public, boxing, casual fans, they like to see the knockouts, they like to see, you know, highlight rules and if the more highlight rules you can supply, end of the day is a business, the more likely it is you're going to see more people wanting to tune in to watch Conor Ben and obviously when, when Conor Ben potentially steps in, with the likes of, you know, I mean, no, it's, it's, to be honest here, yeah, even talking about it the, with the likes of, uh, before I was even going to go into the likes who's going to fight, the disparity between the low level welterweights, the high level welterweights, there's no real middle ground. Like, if we're talking about next steps for Conor Ben, we're talking about Virgil Tees, we're talking about Boots Ennis, we're talking about maybe if you're looking about some guys that are not really going for world titles right now, but are good names, Danny Garcia. Um, obviously, Sean Porter's no longer around. They were talking about maybe him fighting. Uh, what's his What's this guy's name? Adrian Broner. That was another name that's been banded around as well. So it's quite interesting. If Conor Ben does fight a a what a, a, a Danny Garcia knocks him out, that that would be definitely a big name on the resume. Um, if he does fight Adrian Broner, that would be a good fight to sell. Good name that Americans know, and also a good payday as well. So. Can't really complain in that sense, and it's a good name, like I said, to have on the resume. Uh, but when we're talking about guys like Virgil Tees that uh, McKinson's going to fight, which I think, as far as I'm concerned, I think Virgil Tees is going to knock him out. Um, when we have the Virgil Tees, the Boots Ennis, these young, fresh, like as the American, Mex American fighters, as with Virgil Tees, Mexican, American you know, these are not guys you just jump in there with. You know, you have to, like, like Malik Scott said, marinate in settings. You know, you have to marinate it, you know, really build the confidence, learn more, learn more, learn more, and keep learning more in these kind of fights. You know, like have against the, the Van Herdens, against the Granados, against the Algeries, you know. Uh, it, to be honest, even in fact, if fighting an Adrian Bruno, Danny Garcia will do well if you're going to fight guys like a Boots Ennis or, you know, and people in that sense. Because I know Conor Ben was also talking about fighting Ugas and obviously Errol Spence is going to be fighting Ugas. So is that a route he wants to take or Ugas is a big guy? Maybe he's not even going to have the chance to fight Ugas or Errol Spence. Maybe both of them are both going to move up to 154 uh, at some point. So it's interesting stuff, man. I don't know. Conor Ben, you know, he's got, obviously he's got his dad's name, Nigel Ben. He's got the hype around him. He's been, you know, performing very well uh, for someone that obviously hasn't got that lengthy amateur background. So, you know, he, you, you can't really blame him in that sense. He went in there, done what he wanted to do. He knocked him spark out, got him the hell out of there. And that's all she wrote. So the question is, is how Conor Ben is going to perform, you know, when, he, I, I, how he's gonna, when he's taking on, if he's taking on a boot center, if he's taking on a Virgil Tees, or even if he's taking on an, a David Avenician. That's a name that, 
he's been associated with no <laughs> high risk, no reward. So these are the kind of fights I want to see Conor Ben in to see like what is the levels right now. I want to see him fight an Avenician. I want to see him fight, you know, because if McKinson can fight uh, Virgil Tees and it looks like McKinson's been thrown to the walls, get Conor Ben in there, let him fight Virgil Tees. But I don't really see Eddie Hearn doing that right now. I feel like if Eddie Hearn's going to put him in there with any fighter that's above the tail fighter that Conor Ben's fighting right now, it's going to be a fighter that is, let me not say wash, but is, you know, is no longer in their prime. But is it a good enough name for people to say like, rah, Conor Ben beat this guy. But it's not going to be like an, an elite fight right now that's really, really going to, you know, destroy the money chain or money flow or anything like that. So it's more of a building phase with Conor Ben, building, 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 building. At some point, they're going to release him, you know, um, to take on those uh, um, dangerous uh, American fighters out there, man. Because damn, Boots Ennis, Virgil Tees. You know, we're having to, but then we're talking about the the, the uh, tier above that, Errol Spence, Terence Crawford, you know, and obviously Conor Ben is moving through the ranks. So, listen, and we also have the guys in the, you know, the, the lower division soon, probably moving up to welterweight division, you know, um, Josh Taylor going welterweight as well. That's another, that's another fight, you know, pff, you know, people are moving up in there. I, I think even so, was it Tank? Um, Javon Davis even talking about wanting to go and fight uh, wanting to move up to go and fight Keith Furman and Keith Furman still about as well. That's a another good name that if Conor Ben was able to somehow Eddie Hearn work out a deal for Conor Ben to fight Keith Furman, that would be a great name to have on the resume if he's able to beat Keith Furman. And if he couldn't beat them, you know, people are just going to be like, well, you know, he, he wasn't ready, he's still learning. So, you know, but to be honest, I feel like Conor Ben is more willing to go and fight these guys than maybe his, his handlers or, you know, the promoters are willing to put him in there because they just want to you know, see what he can do first before, you know, you know, getting him, putting him in there with a high risk, a risky fighter like a, an Errol Spence or uh, a Boots or, you know, people, Danny Garcia, because any of those guys potentially could be on um, Conor Ben because Conor Ben is relatively, not let me not say he's a novice, but he doesn't have that vast amateur experience like that. So when you get in there with guys that actually have heart and are not going to go in there and be flustered by some hand speed, you know, one, let's see what man can do then. So, Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me see what you guys are saying. What do you guys think about Conor Ben's victory over Chris Van Herden? Were you impressed by that? Or is Chris Van Herden just a uh, cab driver, milkman that, you know, finished his delivery job and, you know, came in the ring to fight Conor Ben and, and couldn't get it done? Or, you know, was this just a spectacular performance by Conor Ben and was able to, uh, you know, get the job done and move on to the next one? And can he potentially cause the big American names massive problems? Is Conor Ben taking over the world weight division at some point drop your comments in the comment section below let me see what you guys are saying make sure you like my video share my video and again drop your comments and i'll be replying to those as well cool